Yeah, so um, I'm here to talk about uh, things I've been working on recently, which is, of all things, hardware. Uh, it's just that this hardware, which is going to be the solid state uh, memory, is going to be highly relevant to database performance, as we, we all know. So um, I want to give you the, I know we heard about a lot about Flash already, but um, besides the ever-increasing number of CPU cores that you know, make things go faster, the most important thing for, from a database perspective certainly is the, falling and increase, the increasing density and falling cost of uh, memory, uh, DRAM, flash, and hard disk, which has uh, kind of accelerated in this recent economy. And uh, the, the question at hand is, you know, what sort of the optimal machine one could build going forward that really makes uh, databases, including MySQL, go really, really fast. Now, one, one has to start this by looking at the history of the disk drive, which uh, dates back more than 50 years. IBM invented the disk drive in 1955, I believe, the year I was born. And the, the first model was a glowing five megabyte disk drive. It was the size of a washing machine. Um, it took about you know, eight years to get up to 25 megabytes. In fact, even in the 1980s, most of you are probably too young to remember this, a, a good sized disk was just you know, a gigabyte. Um, well, in 2002, IBM sold their disk business to Itachi, and the density improvements since are really quite remarkable. Um, in 2004, we had 250 gigabytes. Two years later, you know, oops, typo here, half a, half a terabyte. Standard disk today are a terabyte. Next year, going to be two terabytes. So that's great news. Um, here's some pictures of the original IBM uh, disk from 1956. These are the you know, washing size units they had in the 80s. And this is, of course, a, a modern disk drive. So the good news here is that the performance just keeps going up, and the, the cost per spindle is essentially has remained the same over all these years, meaning the cost per bit has declined very, very much. The bad news is that the IOPS per disk have more or less stayed constant. In other words, they haven't improved, and as a result, the IOPS per gigabyte of content has declined, correspondingly to the increase in capacity. So uh, just to sum up the disk thing here, you know, great improvements in density, incredibly cheap, but limitation in terms of IO ops and transfer rate. And it's really hard to improve this because it's basically a mechanical problem. Now, in the meanwhile, um, in the mid 80s, uh, Toshiba invented the flash memory chip. First flash memory chip, 256 kilobits. It took 10 years to get up to 32 megabits, you know, little tiny numbers. Well, in 2002, Samsung shipped the first gigabit chip and uh, they've literally been doubling the capacity ever since. So in 2005, four gigabits, 2007, uh, 16 gigabits, and Samsung announced they will ship a 64 gigabit chip on, on, one, on one physical die this year. Um, then they can put multiple chips per package. Uh, the latest, last I heard, you can actually put up to eight of these, you know, that they have to send on the silicon to make it fit. But in theory, there will be 64 gigabyte chips that internally made from mobile die this year. So that's a remarkable increase. Uh, the physical size of one of these chips is, this is millimeters on the bottom, you know, it's like 12 by 15 millimeters, so it's very, very small. And um, the most important thing about Flash is that it's getting cheap all the time. So you might have noticed this on your iPods or, or cell phones, but if you uh, look at this lower line, it's a little hard to read from the back. Um, this is the cost per gigabyte uh, starting in 2004, where it was over $100. This year, $3, you know, I'm sorry, that was last year. <laughs> this year, less than $2. Next year, sub $1, 40 cents, 25 cents. And pretty, pretty soon, these things are actually free. But if you look at this <laughs> remarkable improvement <laughs> from $100 per gigabyte down to, you know, a dollar and change now to, to pennies in a few years, um, it, it makes you wonder, you know, what does this mean? Now, part of the improvement I should add here has to do with so-called multi-level flash, where instead of per transistor you store only one bit, they can actually store now three bits going to four bits, and that by itself, you know, has driven the cost down a lot. Now, um, the truth in advertising is that multiple flash works great for the iPod, but it doesn't actually work great for the uh, enterprise uh, disk replacement because the more bits you store per transistor, the less often you can write these cells until they, they lose their memory. Uh, and the problem with the multi-level flash is you only have about 10,000 write cycles, which is not a lot. The single-level flash chips in the meanwhile have gone up to a million write cycles, and this is per block, right? There's many, many blocks per device. So you can now, the latest, most robust devices, you can write continuously for five years before they start breaking, and that's as good as any, any disk drive. Um, 
and then there are some other issues with flash, you know, it's called read disturbance, program disturbance, write endurance, and the flash memory controller that actually controls this, these chips has to keep track of bad blocks and has to do wear leveling and so on. So there's a rash of new memory controllers coming out that does this correctly. Uh, so the application doesn't really see this, but it is very important to perform these functions, otherwise the bits may not be there. Um, a typical flash memory controller has uh, four channels today. Uh, each of these flash devices does about 10,000 I.O. ops, so with four channels you can do about 40,000 read I.O. ops, about 10,000 write I.O. ops, and uh, that's a remarkable performance. This is about the speed of 100 disk drives. So one of these flash controllers with a few flash chips, same I.O. ops as 100 disk drives, obviously at much lower power. And um, you, I'm sure you've seen the announcement, uh, people putting flash everywhere, there's two and a half inch flash solid state disks, uh, PCI cards that have flash, and, and more recently flash dims that on a tiny little dim, um, you know, have flash. So we actually uh, built one of these at Sun, and I know it's a little hard to see from the back, but this is a, a mini dim, the same size as your laptop computers, that has a complete solid state disk flash subsystem, essentially the same as normally fits in a two and a half inch disk drive. But um, because it's so much smaller, we can put a lot more in a box, and that's, that's important as we want to put each one of these on, uh, on each server in the future. So these are some pictures from you know, conventional 2.5-inch disks, our, our PCI card that's coming out shortly. So this is about 100,000 IO ops. And then here's the little flash dim in large. So again, one of these is as fast as a conventional solid-state disk, and we've measured these at over 30,000 IO ops. Um, now to give you an idea of what's possible with this is we can stick 80 of these little flash dims into a one new box uh, and we have actually shown this at a previous show so I'm not spilling any beans here but we have now measured over 1 million IO ops per second per box. Uh, it's going up to 4 terabyte of capacity so you can essentially put your entire database right into flash and run it at a million IO ops in a one new box. So that should change the, the price performance ratio of IO ops significantly. So this will be coming out as a product very shortly. Uh, but to summarize this, you know, flash itself is a roughly 100 times speed up compared to a disk, and that's at the flash controller level, meaning multiple flash channels. It is actually more reliable than a hard disk. It doesn't break mechanically. It's smaller than a hard disk. It consumes a lot less power than a hard disk, and it's cheaper than a disk on the IOPS basis, but a disk is a lot cheaper on a gigabyte basis. Now, the next question is, how does Flash compare with DRAM? You know, both of these are solid-state semiconductor technologies, and uh, there are some fundamental differences between those technologies. One is, a Flash device is actually a block-oriented device. Uh, in other words, once you get to a block, which takes about 100 microseconds, you get the whole block. In a DRAM, of course, you read one word at a time. Uh, the access time at the block level or the word level is about a thousand times faster for the DRAM than for the Flash and also the transfer rate uh, of the device itself to the memory bus is about 10 times faster. The flash certainly wins on the device density basis, it wins on a price per bit basis, and it wins on a, a power consumption basis. But there's no question that DRAM is a lot faster. So the question ultimately is, you know, how does DRAM compare with flash in price? And it depends on the year and the sort of the quarter and the years you're looking at, uh, but it's anywhere from five to one to 10 to one cheaper per bit for flash, and this is single level flash now compared to DRAM, so that's significant. And then from a density standpoint, which is how much flash can you actually put in the system, it's sort of the other ratio, right? It's about 10 times bigger for the uh, flash compared to the DRAM. And uh, the vertical scale here, by the way, are uh, gigabytes, so with uh, flash, you know, we hope to have multiple terabytes uh, next to each server here in the near future. In fact, this, the scale is kind of hard to read, so put this into logarithmic, log scale here. Uh, so basically, the uh, increase in DRAM capacity per system we expect to be about a factor of two every year going forward, but so is flash, and the flash is ahead by almost an order of magnitude. And this is for single-level flash. For multi-level flash, which you know, may have some uses, case uses in terms of uh, read caching, uh, you get almost another order of magnitude increase. So it is not uh, inconceivable to have tens of terabytes in multi-level flash uh, in a few years. So to um, sum this up, um, solid state memory, both on the flash, size, uh, flash side and the DRAM side, is going to grow up uh, incredibly fast in terms of density and uh, corresponding reduction in cost, which completely changes the kind of system one can build that's ideal for running MySQL. So this is why I'm here. Uh, and it's actually the combination of DRAM and flash. You want to sort of max out on the DRAM and then max out on the flash to get the most uh, working set uh, performance inside uh, such systems. 
And it's actually a very uh, intriguing technology to build much more scalable systems than one could have built a few years ago when these components were simply too expensive to, to apply to the uh, database uh, problem. And um, I was told originally I had 15 minutes for my uh, talk here, which I, I just used up, I think, 10 minutes. And I wanted to leave some time for questions you may have just on what's happening with uh, flash and, and memory. But I have to admit I can't see anything because all I'm looking at is the, the dark lights here. The, uh, let's, okay, here's a question on the front. Uh, this is a little bit off the uh, subject, but it's kind of an obvious question. What's, uh, how do you feel about Oracle buying Sun? <laughs> and do you plan to stay with the company once Oracle buys Sun? Well, um, I, um, I was told by our lawyers that all the things we can say about Oracle is on the Oracle website and the Sun website. So if you go to Oracle slash Sun or Sun slash Oracle, you know, anything you ever wanted to know is right on the website. Uh, what I was going to point out, though, though is that the uh, opportunity to build uh, better um, database servers right, using large memory and large-scale flash uh, these days is actually quite tremendous. And obviously, this is of great interest to Oracle as it is to Sun. Uh, so there's, there's actually a hardware connection here, if you want to know the truth, to this uh, transaction. And um, again, you know, the, the flash uh, and memory increases in, in years and years have completely changed the kind of system one can build now compared to, say, five years ago from a, from a database perspective. So uh, you should expect a whole bunch of interesting um, database servers to come out of this uh, future collaboration. Any other questions? Sorry, I really can, I can hardly see in the back there. Uh, I think there's one in the middle there. <coughs> you should, I'm told you should come to a microphone so people can hear you. <coughs> Hello? Uh, can you, uh, uh, you mentioned in an earlier slide the uh, right performance being, I guess, one of the concerns. Uh, can you just, Talk a little bit more about how that's going to be addressed in, uh, in I guess, the future. Right, so let, let me talk Thanks. about this. So there's two problems with the writes. The first one is erasing stuff in the flash is actually really slow, like many, many milliseconds, no faster than a disk drive, because the erase cycle, you know, you have to stabilize the device after you do the erase. So what the controller does is it does a erase ahead, which means there's always empty space in the flash so the writes go in quickly. But if and when you run into this erase block, you know, it's going to be painful slow. The other issue is just the number of write cycles, which is the, the endurance element. And what the controllers do today is they are using DRAM. Uh, let me go to this picture here. Uh, oops. Wrong direction. This DRAM on the side is actually used as a write staging buffer. So the writes go first into the DRAM and then they go into the flash, right? And this, because it performs more bursting kind of operation, reduces the number of write cycles. And also accelerates it because you can handshake the DRAM as soon as it's written there. With the caveat, of course, that the power can't go off until the DRAM is stored in the flash. So what we do in all of these flash systems is we added a, a supercapacitor, which is enough charge that if all the power fails, you know, the, the world goes blank and all the, it goes dark and the power on your redundant grid goes away, it has like two or three seconds worth of power, which is enough time to write the DRAM into the flash and save the bits. So the controller at the FMC actually has this extra little capacitor on the side that keeps it running for the required time to flush the, the DRAM state into the flash. And that's how it both speeds up the writes and it saves the bits. Um, we have worked with uh, Samsung and the other flash vendors to, to you know, ask them to increase the write uh, durability. And uh, that has already improved significantly over the last couple of years. So about a few years ago, the number of write cycles was only about 100,000. And now they're getting close to a million write cycles per device. But again, under any normal benchmark, which is if you write to this device on a continuous basis, 50 megabytes per second you know, average bandwidth, 24 by 7, it will last for five years before we'll notice that the bits are dropping out. So it's a very robust lifetime compared to conventional disk drive. And more importantly, in five years, you know, this device will be completely obsolete and you will probably upgrade to a device that's, you know, 16 times bigger. So from that perspective, you know, the right lifetime is now becoming adequate to serve the needs of the enterprise. Whereas on the multi-level flash, you know, if you do the same benchmark as you write continuously, you're going to burn a device in a month. Okay, so that's the difference between the single-level flash and the multi-level flash. Okay, thank you. And again, I can't see in the back there, but any other questions? Yeah. Over here. Um, 
Are there certain computing problems that do better with Flash um, and other ones where perhaps Flash doesn't really add an awful lot to the performance? Well, the, the classical problem is that each of these flash dims or flash disks is really quite small, right? So the, the flash dims we were uh, launching initially have a, a raw capacity of 32 gigabytes. They're going to be marketed as a, either 24, 25 gigabyte device because we want to allow for that erase ahead buffer and for the uh, eventual degradation. But if you simply have, you know, hundreds of these and mount them under, say, a Linux file system, you would have hundreds of little, little disks, and you would have to still have the problem of how you manage this as a pool. So the great thing about uh, Solaris CFS is that it, it treats the flash as an extension to the memory cache that's already in the file system cache. In other words, it naturally takes what's available there and makes it part of the memory file system hierarchy without changing the application. And, and that seems very attractive because you can then essentially run the entire disk system at the speed of the flash, and you don't even know that the thing is just a cache in front of the real disks. But uh, you, if you don't have CFS, you have sort of this stark choice of mounting individual devices and trying to manage this at some higher level, right? Which is which is possible, but you just have a ton of little, essentially disks out there that are flash disks, you know, to make up the overall performance. So, so again, the the way this is viewed by the software is a key differentiation going forward, and uh, these things are fairly small per per controller. Any other questions? Oh, one okay. more. Uh, as far as I understand, the write performance uh, on flash disks, uh, the write ratio between sequential write and random write is far larger than the ratio on uh, normal disks, on today's normal disks. Is that true? And uh, how would you expect this uh, would affect uh, database design? Yeah, that, that's a good point. So when you look at the streaming writes, which is just doing sequential I.O., um, each flash controller today, it depends on how many channels it has, but you're limited by the clock rate per channel and the number of channels. And it's only a few hundred megabytes per second, so it's not significantly faster than a conventional hard disk, except you, get, you can put in many, many of more of these devices, so in aggregate you get more performance. There's also, you know, vendors developing flash controllers that have many more channels than the ones uh, that are available today. So eventually you are going to see gigabyte per second per controller kind of performance numbers, but today they're in the hundreds of megabytes per second range. Uh, on the IOP spaces, you know, it's really the block access time that determines the performance, and each block, you know, is uh, multiple kilobytes. So it, it's a reasonable good match to database applications, but not for the smallest blocks, and the smallest blocks are still going to be limited. Okay, any last questions? The clock tells me I'm at the end of my time here. Uh, well, if no more questions, thank you very much.